I remember a youngster on TV uh, uh, shouting on television uh, at an interview, and we're going to come to Inglewood. Well, Inglewood uh, became, is now predominantly an African-American city, uh, although the Hispanic population is growing there now. But uh, at that time, it wasn't. Gardena was, was also not an African-American uh, city. I think that's what happened in Holly Park. I don't know what came first, the chicken or the egg, the school board boundaries and the Watts riot at the same time, and one thing led to another, and there became vacancies up there. So yeah, it, it, it kind of uprooted, uh, a lot of people even moved out of the areas. Uh, like Compton used to be all white. When the blacks started buying there, the whites all moved out. Same thing with Englewood. It used to be all white. They wouldn't accept the change, so they moved out other places. The white flight was just that white flight, <laughs> you know. They, they were young and old, they just packed up and left. Where, where did those people move to? Uh, or Orange County, my friends are in Westminster, but Orange County is a lot of Mexican people now. They're surrounded. <laughs> so, so to some of those people that hate other races, <laughs> they went to a worse situation than, <laughs> than they were here. We noticed as uh, at Washington High School, uh, Clay Junior High in the northern end, uh, just north of Gardena, began to have more and more minority, particularly uh, black kids or African American kids. Uh, other parents began to try to find other schools for their kids. Apparently, many black people were frightened about what was happening, burn city, burn baby, burn and all that stuff. And I, I guess a lot of them moved out of Compton and Watts area and moved over there and bought these houses which were vacant. And besides that, the kids, the school situation was such that it wasn't according to the people who lived up there, appropriate for their kids anymore. So more vacancies came up there and ultimately it evolved into a black community. I don't know, it was at least 20 years ago. I know my friend lived down the street. She became one of my very best friends. And they moved up to Newhall. Now she lives in Texas. And um, I had a, a, other friends that moved to the beach and um, the people that I originally became friendly with, like next door there was a couple, uh, Mary, I think, and Tony, and they moved. The irony was that Holly Park Track in the early 50s when they first built it had racial covenants, which became illegal in the, in the mid 50s. That's why there were very few Asian people here, it was like all white. I'm B. Bernstein, and I live in Gardena since the 50s. I'm the original homeowner, which is quite rare around here. I moved to Gardena because my husband worked for United Hardware, which is right off of El Segundo, very close. This is the house where I live. I uh, bought it when it was brand new, over 50 years ago, and I still enjoy it. It's two bedrooms and like they say, a den and two bathrooms, and uh, has nice cross ventilation, and I have lovely neighbors. When I first moved here, about half the people were Caucasians and about one third were Jewish. And now I think I'm probably, uh, I know I'm the only Jew on the block and maybe the only Jew in Gardena, but that's fine. Blockbusting uh, was done uh, by realtors who wanted to make money by selling a lot of houses. What they would do, they'd go to a neighborhood like the, uh, the probably white Holly Park neighborhood of Gardena, and they'd, they'd buy a house and put a black family in there. And then they'd go door to door in the neighborhood saying, blacks are moving in, you better sell now while you still have some value in your property because it's all gonna go down. They panicked people. And I mentioned one group of Jewish uh, families, 50 of them went to, families, went to out of town in one summer. They all sold their houses. It was all done in the early 70s. Uh, you know, it was kind of funny because I moved here in September 69. And I noticed in January of 70, uh, for sale signs started popping up like popcorn. And that was because of the fact if people put their homes up for sale in January, they were hoping they'd be sold by June, the kids was out of school, then they could move to wherever they were going. So it was a big turnover. It was a real big turnover in the first part of 70. I would say from 70 to 80, that's about the time when many blacks moved into Gardena and a lot of the, the whites moved out. There was a lot of white flight here. There was a lot of white flight. We had a song on our first album. It's called There Goes the Neighborhood. There goes the neighborhood. The whites are moving in. They'll bring their necks of kin. It was sort of a reverse 
role of uh, possibly some or unwarranted or warranted apprehension that people had about black people moving into their neighborhoods. And then I was talking about uh, either re-gentrification or gentrification, however you look at it. The reverse of that, which was already starting to happen, I flipped it, you know, here, white people moving in the neighborhoods, oh my God, yeah, they're going to mess everything up. <laughs> At one time, it was called Amistow Avenue. Later, the name changed to Compton Boulevard. And when Compton got a bad reputation years later, the people of Gardena voted to change the name again. And so now it's known as Marine Avenue. So that's kind of an evolution of the names changes on this street. It changed it because of Compton, all the way down to the beach. It ended at Vermont. But they didn't want nothing to do with Compton, so they changed the name. All the cities, the beach cities, all the way down from here to there. Why they did, I, I just heard that they just didn't want nothing to do with that, just that name because of the blacks. You know, it's, it's amazing how we are the first city west of the Mississippi to start recognizing Dr. King's birthday. Well, Arthur Johnson was the first person to bring the program to Gardena in, I believe, 1972. I'm not sure the city was able to give him money, but I do remember him telling me some things that when he went to some of the business and asked if they would give him a donation so he could recognize this day and have a program or what have you. And some of the people gave him black shoe polish. And of course, I'm not sure what the black shoe polish represented, but I think it speaks for itself that they weren't interested in recognizing a black man's name for a holiday. Whenever someone asks me, uh, I never turn down an opportunity to, uh, to share Martin Luther King, my mentee. Uh, I didn't know him that well, but I did get a chance to meet him. So whenever I get a chance to share Dr. Martin Luther King with an audience, I always do. I dream that one day on the red hills of Georgia, the sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners may be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood. I have a dream. I dream that one day every valley shall be exalted and every hill and mountain will be made low. The rough places will be made plain and the crooked places will be made straight and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together. Anyway, that's just a line or two. <laughs> when I moved here in 69, uh, this community was totally white. And now I would say that it is probably totally Hispanic and black. So things have, have really changed in the 40 years I've been here. There, there's been a great change in everything here. There have been major exoduses post the riots. They were, they were already happening, but the riots made them go like, poof, like the big bang of Exodus. I remember my dad used to say to me when we'd drive on the Harbor Freeway, he would say that if they gave the city to black people and other minorities, we were talking about black people in particular, and he's a black man talking, he said, if they gave us the city tomorrow with the keys, it'd fall apart in a week because we don't know how to do it. We, we don't know how to run a city like that. We don't, we haven't been educated and involved enough in the process for us to be able to truly man the post and do the jobs. The city has changed and it is ever changing. As you know, we have a large uh, apartment population. You can go up in certain sections of our city where there's lots of apartments and they're rental apartments. And the people that live in these apartments, whether they want to live there or not, isn't the issue. The fact is, is that the way they care for themselves in the apartments is very evident that there's not a lot of pride. They can, it's almost like a, a mentality that is impoverished. Okay, well you mix that kind of a thinker with a person that wants to own, there's going to be a little bit of uh, a tension, so the walls go up, literally gates and walls. It's hard nowadays, you know, renting alone is, is hard, so, but uh, there's people out there 
So just saving, you know, nickels and dimes to, to get the American dream.